groups. And five million patients face being dropped by their national health dentists unless they visit them in the next month. That's all this Tuesday lunchtime from the one o'clock news. Good afternoon. You haven't been in contact. If she's gone missing, how could have I been in contact with her? That's what you were saying when I came in, wasn't it? You think I have something to do with this? No, 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 no. He, he wasn't saying that. So where have you been? With Rachel, all right? Or you're expecting me to stand out in front of the church and throw a confetti? Hey, hey, look, he doesn't know anything. Yeah. Hey, Joey, catch! Oh, I'm so idiot. sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Oh, God. Are you right? Stephen Hawking. You know, I'm reading this at the moment. Uh, you read that bit about the, um, oh, what is it? The uh, origin of the universe, hey? Um, do you want to see if there's any hoops still left? Yeah, sure. car and the drive as I was heading out. Uh, yeah, I, I had to get away. It was like a madhouse in there today and my uh, concentration level was about zero. I've been a little preoccupied myself. Not surprised. You must have a lot on your mind at the moment. Can I talk to you about that? I didn't really get a chance to yesterday. You could have talked to me about this a lot earlier. I didn't know then what I wanted to say. Now I do. Ian, It hurt a lot yesterday. And um, I'm probably taking the coward's way out, but I, I really think it's better if you just go without dragging this out. Does that mean you won't come with me? Are you serious? Yeah. I can't just up and leave, E. I have responsibilities here. I understand that. But nothing's impossible, Pippa. Hey, just think about it. You mean a lot to me, Pippa. I don't want to lose you. It's only intimidating <gasps> if you face it alone. I've always admired your strength of spirit. The courage you show and the decisions you make, even if they're wrong. What choice are you going to make now? You can stay out here and take your chances alone, or you can come home with me. I want you to come with me. But it's your choice. You have to talk to me, Selina. What do you want? I want to go home. Free to do that. You can find a way, or you're free to follow my way. London tonight, the surprise snow that brought the southeast to a standstill. But is there more on the way? We're live with the latest. Plus, the men who say they caught a form of cancer by talking on their mobile phones. And potluck, how our very own Nick Clark aims to be in the frame for the world's snooker title. London tonight, live at six, right after ITN. It's not how you travel, but who you travel with that counts. Celebrity guests and star attractions. You'll be the first to know where and when. 
star attractions tonight are Sylvester Stallone and Ray Liotta, Wallace and Gromit and Leslie Phillips in Good Stuff, tonight 6.30 on Carlton. Johnson's pH 5.5 2-in-1 shower gel with its free puff creates a moisturising lather for our softest skin ever. But remember, you only need a drop. Six of our TIE fighters have been destroyed and regrettably our radar base has fallen into rebel hands. Um, Lord Vader, maybe you should try one of these. They actually help you breathe more easily. Tunes really do help you breathe more easily. They taste great. But they come in three fruity flavours. My dream night in. A tall, dark stranger would ring the bell. He'd be holding a sensational Pizza Hut Sicilian with oregano, basil and garlic baked into a tasty square base. Then he'd disappear and leave me and the girls to eat the lot. New Pizza Hut Sicilian. A dream of a delivery with oregano, basil, garlic and corners. On today's Missing File, we are urgently looking for 12-year-old Monique Kemp from South End in Essex, who was last seen on Saturday, November the 8th. Monique disappeared from her children's home and may be staying in the Brixton, Peckham or Streatham area, though she loves the bright lights of Piccadilly Circus and Leicester Square. She's a friendly and sociable person and very streetwise. She enjoys trampolining and also loves going clubbing. Monique is one of ten children and her whole family are really worried about her. Her mum says she wants Monique to know that she's there for her and will help her sort out any problems she may have. She loves her and just wants her to get in touch. Monique is five feet five with brown hair, possibly now dyed blonde. If you think you've seen her, call the National Missing Persons Helpline on free call 0500 700 700. Good evening, this is Carlton. Looking at later on, the bill is at 8 o'clock, followed by the Cook Report, which tonight is about counterfeit goods. And then at 9, it's Soldier, Soldier. From the studios of ITN, the early evening news with John Suchet. Good evening. The government took the wraps off its Save As You Shop scheme today with a boost for small savers and a shock for people with peps and tessers. The idea, a people's savings account that can be operated at supermarkets, is aimed at millions of low-income families to give them a chance to make tax-free earnings. But people with large investments in peps and tessers will suffer. Our business editor Mark Webster reports. Designed to attract millions of people who currently save nothing, this is the most radical change in personal finance for a decade. It's being sold as much simpler, more flexible and fairer than the existing tax-free savings schemes. You genuinely think this is fair? Oh, I think very fair and I think it's very exciting and I think we're going to find an enormous take-up. I think we are looking at something like six million more accounts. But it does mean millions of personal equity plans or PEPs and tax-exempt special savings accounts, TESAs, will be phased out by April 1999. So how will the individual savings account work? You'll be able to open an account almost anywhere, from banks and building societies to supermarkets. You could pay in as little as you like, whenever you like, up to a total of £5,000 a year. That can be up to 1000 in cash, 1000 in life insurance and the remainder in stocks and bonds but the maximum you could ever invest is £50,000. And how will it compare with PEPs and TESSAs? With a PEP, the maximum investment is £9,000 a year. A TESSA, it's £9,000 over five years. And the ISA is £5,000 a year. PEPs you can cash in any time. TESSAs you must hold for the full five years. And ISAs you can cash in any time. This change will hit those wealthy enough to have more than £50,000 in tax-free schemes who'll have to pay more tax. But it's not the only aspect which worries the experts. Some of the money, once you get above £1,000, will be invested in shares. And I'm not sure it's a very good idea for people to be buying something at a supermarket checkout, which is going to be invested in shares, but is called a savings account, so you think it's only going to have interest added. The government's hope is that as well as having a specialist advice centre in every supermarket like this one, if you do, while you're doing your shopping, decide to add five or ten pounds to your individual savings account, you can do so. The government hopes that by doing that, 
They'll attract an extra 6 million people to opening tax-free savings accounts. However, even selling through stores, some experts doubt that poorer Britons will get the savings habit. More than a quarter now save nothing at all. Mark Webster, ITN, The City. Next on the early evening news, the Earl's £2 million offer means divorce tomorrow. Council tax could rise by 10% after government move. Sudden snowfall brings chaos and there's more on the way. And heads we lose. England miss out on the top seeds. Lawyers say that by this time tomorrow, Earl Spencer and his estranged wife will be divorced. Their courtroom battle in South Africa ended when the Earl dramatically raised his settlement offer to £2 million. John Irvine reports from Cape Town. This morning, the two lawyers had to wait for the London banks to open so that the Spencer divorce settlement could be transferred from England to South Africa. Late last night, after 11 hours of talks, the Countess and the Earl left their lawyers' chambers separately, neither of them making any comment to the press or media. Their barristers, however, could not conceal their delight at reaching a settlement. Do you want us to kiss each other, shall we? Well, they handed out a joint statement in which the Earl and Countess said they unreservedly withdrew all allegations made in relation to each other. They said they recognised that both had contributed to the sad breakdown of their marriage. Details of the settlement were not made known, but it's clear that the Countess was made a much improved offer, a lump sum settlement of around £2 million plus her house in Cape Town. Today, Earl Spencer's PR representative said the Earl was glad it was over. Earl Spencer's delighted that the events of the last week have been brought to a conclusion and that for the sake of the children they can both move on to their future lives and that all the allegations against him have been withdrawn. The image of a bitter divorce battle was very different from that of September 1989 when the then Viscount Althorpe married the former model Victoria Lockwood. Eight years on, they are about to divorce. The case has attracted huge publicity, and the Earl in particular may regret not choosing a British court where divorce proceedings are heard in private. John Irvine, ITN, Cape Town. So, uh, John, what exactly is the procedure there tomorrow? Well, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, Earl Spencer will re return to this Cape Town court where he will take the witness stand. He will not, however, make accusations about his wife, nor will he answer questions about his alleged infidelities. Instead, he will give official confirmation that his marriage is over, that their differences are irreconcilable, and that will allow the divorce to go ahead. Uh, well, now, last night's settlement, did it come out of the blue? Well, John, I think this was a case of brinkmanship. Last night was the last opportunity they had to resolve this dispute before it became really very nasty indeed. Up until yesterday, all we'd heard was legal argument. The next step was for the Countess and the Earl to take the witness stand and to make accusations about one another's conduct. Now, I think the closer the time came for them to give evidence, the more it was impressed upon them was that they both had more to gain than they had to lose by reaching a settlement and by not trying to humiliate one another in a public forum like an open court. Thank you, John. Council tax bills could shoot up by as much as 10% next year. The predictions come after the government announced its plans today for local government finances. Opposition parties call the proposals a betrayal of Labour promises not to raise taxes. Our political correspondent Hugh Pym reports. The government's plans for local authority finances came under heavy fire from the Liberal Democrats. They claimed council tax bills were set to rise by 10%, the biggest since the tax was introduced in 1993. Isn't it the case that uh, today's settlement is one of the tightest ever? That council tax bills are set to soar and council services are set to suffer? What we have here is not just smoke and mirrors, which is what the last government always did with these settlements. This year we have added Labour spin. John Prescott said he was relaxing the rules to allow more freedom for town halls within overall spending limits. What we've certainly got is added Labour financial resources yeah. and I've actually spelt them out. Nothing to do with spin, a lot to do with extra money to meet the new services that are needed. But the Tories also predicted a double figure tax increase. For many elderly people this wipes out at a stroke any advantage that they might have had from the winter payment scheme. 
Mr Prescott said the bill for a middle ranking property should rise by 7%, but as always, the figures would vary between local authorities. Hugh Pym, ITN, Westminster. More heavy snowfalls are expected tonight as many parts of the country get their first real taste of winter. The weather has created both havoc and Christmas card scenes. Lauren Taylor is in Seven Oaks in Kent, one of the worst hit areas. Although weather forecasters say it's not unusual to have snow at this time of year, and in the Scottish Highlands they've had it over the past few days, this cold snap does seem to have caught people out in some parts of the country. In Cumbria, overnight rain turned to snow after a sudden drop in temperatures. Traffic ground to a halt on icy roads. Even roads that had been cleared remained hazardous. In some areas, temperatures went down to minus 8 degrees. In Surrey, diggers were used to clear some of the worst affected roads. But a combination of freezing snow and bad visibility meant drivers were still being advised to take extra care. Most of the snow fell in the southeast, police reporting several minor accidents. In Kent, it's been snowing all day, settling mainly on high ground. Despite warnings of the possibility of snow, some areas had not been gritted. Some rural parts were effectively cut off. With scenes like this around the country, one bookmaker cut the odds on a white Christmas. For most travellers, though, the snow caused problems. Breakdown services have been kept busy all day. And in Edinburgh, they escaped the snow that fell further north in the mountains, but were not spared the cold that has hit most of the country. <laughs> Back in the south, the wintry weather has not been a hardship for everyone. It brought early Christmas fun for these students. Some areas may continue to look like this in the next couple of days, as the forecast is for more cold weather and further snow showers in the east. Lauren Taylor, ITN, Kent. The first £100 a week pension for retired couples was announced today by the Social Security Secretary, Harriet Harman. From April, those couples will receive just over £103 a week, a rise of £3.60. A single person can expect almost £65, up £2.25. Child benefit goes up 40 pence to £11.45 for a first child. It's £9.30 for every other child, up 30 pence. The controversial lone parents benefit will stay frozen next year at £17.10. An international conference opened in London today to try to solve one of the century's most disturbing mysteries. What happened to nearly £400 million of looted Nazi gold? The conference is also discussing how to compensate families who lost everything. Kevin Dunn reports. 240 delegates from 42 countries have gathered to try to trace gold looted by the Nazis. This conference, the brainchild of former MP Greville Janna. Oh, this, is, this is a wonderful conference. It is a great moral occasion and I'm absolutely delighted. The Nazis looted hundreds of millions of pounds worth of gold from occupied countries and from the victims of the Holocaust. Today, the Foreign Secretary put a million pounds in a new fund to help the survivors. We have two main objectives. One is to establish the truth. That is the least we owe those who perished in the Nazi persecution. And secondly, to create the momentum for a fund that will provide assistance and compensation to those who survived. Trudy Levy is one of the 300,000 still alive. You can't bring back the people who were killed and whom we lost. And uh, there is no such thing as properly compensating, but at least to help to, to, to have a decent end to one's life. The conference will end on Thursday. Kevin Dunn, ITN, Central London. There's growing pressure on the government tonight to sort out the Welsh beef farmers' dispute. There were more clashes over cheap imports last night. Six Irish lorries were forced out of the port of Fishguard. From there, our Wales correspondent, Tim Rogers, reports. Stop them! Stop them! Tempers frayed for a second night as a picket of Welsh farmers refused to let the Irish imports pass. More than 200 farmers blockaded Fishguard, demanding to inspect Irish lorries to see which were carrying cheap meat. 
After the confrontation, the Irish drivers agreed to turn back. The farmers were unrepentant, saying that while meat prices are tumbling, cheap imports are threatening their livelihood. The anger and the frustration is very deep because I am seeing, uh, well, we are seeing our business is going down the drain very slowly. Both governments and the farmers' unions hope that the farmers may feel satisfied that they've proved their point. But it would seem that more protests are likely. Tim Rogers, ITN, Fishguard. FIFA pointed the finger at the Rome police today for inciting the violence during October's World Cup qualifier against Italy. It agreed with the FA's report that the police had been heavy-handed with English fans. But FIFA also dealt England's World Cup hopes a blow, refusing to seed them in the tournament's top eight. Instead, Brazil, France, Germany, Argentina, Spain, Italy, Romania and Holland will head the eight groups to be drawn on Thursday. Here's our sports reporter, Peter Staunton. Glenn Hoddle spent the morning showing off the skills that all too briefly made him an international. From now until Thursday's draw, he'll be mentally juggling the possibilities thrown up by today's decision not to make England one of the eight seeded teams. That battle was lost four years ago when Graham Taylor's England failed to qualify for the 94 finals. Today it counted heavily against them as England were left out and now joined the European pool, which also features Scotland. England's improved form came too late. Hoddle, though, isn't too worried who his team come up against. Whoever we get, uh, I'm sure their coaches won't be too happy that England are in their group as well. So I think, um, you know, there's, where there's a negative, you always look for a positive as well. The possibility of Scotland being drawn in the same group as England is remote, both sides hoping that if it does happen, it's later in the tournament. One piece of good news from FIFA, they've agreed with the FA that the crowd trouble during England's game in Rome was mainly the fault of the Italian authorities. Police tactics and ticketing arrangements were both criticised. England's chances of staging the event in 2006 don't appear to have been affected. Peter Staunton, ITN Sport. On News at 10 with Trevor McDonald tonight, more on the new individual savings accounts, how they could benefit your finances. Plus, raging out of control, the desperate battle against the hundreds of bushfires.